Hey everyone, it's John here, Sunday, um, November 23rd, 2008. Thought I'd give you a little update, see what's going on with me, what's been going on in pop culture news, <laughs> what have you. I guess the big news this weekend is that ABC loves to kill shows that are creative, invented, and original. Yes, and a one, two, three punch, they're killing um, Pushing Daisies, Eli Stone, and Dirty Sexy Money. So all three shows will be canceled after this season's 13 episodes that uh, have already been um, filmed and in the can. Um, I'm really disappointed about that. I'm disappointed with two out of those three shows. The Eli Stone show had a first great year, had a first great premise. Um, they didn't carry it over well into the second season. Um, what made season one distinct was that they had used songs from one artist consistently through every single episode that kind of linked everything together. You know, um, all the George Michael music that was used last season was phenomenal. It was great. It was it was a great niche to get in and to promote the show and get the plot lines going and they all connected to the plot lines. This year, this season, they had a hodgepodge of all these people coming in and off the show. Um, the stupid cast stunt of Katie Holmes was a joke um, and they just totally underused all their musical potential for the season so the fact that it's getting killed and canceled I'm not too disappointed with I kinda saw that coming Dirty Sexy Money <laughs> you know it is what it is it's the new dynasty it's the new trashy campy soap opera it's in your face hysterical I loved it it was you know it's it's tackedly done you know everyone on that show does a great job with their with their characters I think Donald Sutherland was so is so underappreciated in the role that he has on Dirty Sexy Money I, I think he just totally nailed it and he like to, he is like the center of this family that you know connects everybody um, and, 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 and whenever the situation or the plot line you know went to a different character and he was there to ground each character uh, was I think he did a phenomenal job with that role and it, it fit him like a glove and it looked like he was having a good fun with it so I'm disappointed because I totally love the wackiness and the over the topness of what Dirty Sexy Money is uh, I think the stunt of bringing over Lucy Liu from her failed ABC show and just dumping her on Dirty Sexy Money was also a dumb move uh, on the writers, the producers, whoever did, who made that decision um, I'm not happy uh, with them limiting um, Candy Kane's role on Dirty Sexy Money. I'm pissed off about that, which well, just reminded me about another issue I have of ABC, but we'll go to that in a minute. Let me finish this um, <laughs> issue first. Uh, and then the third show, Pushing Daisies. I mean, come on. It's an awesome cast, an awesome presence, premise, great storytelling. It was whimsical, it was original, it was visual. It gave constant tributes to other um, directors and stuff. The whole tri all these tributes, these inside jokes to Alfred Hitchcock were, were amazing. And, you know, I guess, you know, the American public is not ready for that. You know, they weren't ready for Twin Peaks. You know, they, they buried that quicker, too. Um, Pushing Daisies, I guess, is suffering the same faith. And that's really sad because Kristen Chenoweth is awesome in this. Susie Kurt is awesome in this. Alan Green is awesome on this. And, you know, Lee Pace really brings something fresh and original um, to this show you know and all the guest appearances that that came on this show um, doing little bit parts and all the other Broadway actors that were um, cast and other minor roles throughout these episodes were was also another good time uh, you know cheek and tongue kind of you know wink wink kind of thing as like when Raul Esperanza was on the show it was great you know I was hoping they would develop the show where it got to the point where we would make Olive's mother, and Olive's mother would be played by Christine Ebersole, which would have been awesome. Hello, producers! What's going on? What's going on at ABC? I can't, I'm so livid with the death of plus pushing daisies. I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm getting this emotional about but I am! I am upset about the death of pushing daisies, uh, of anything. Now, the other issue I have with ABC, and maybe it's just me, or maybe it's the way I read it, or the way I see it come across, but you know what? I'm not too happy with the southern demise and dismissal of character Dr. Han on Grey's Anatomy. What's up with that? And yes, I know they're trying to complace it and replace it and cushion the blow will bring in a bisexual character as Meredith's long, long um, best girlfriend from college years, and it's like, 
okay, yeah, you want me to justify uh, that you're progressive and, you, and you're into it, and yeah, you know, you fired off the one actor because of the gay slur he used, and you know, George's character is still there, but you know, nothing's going on with that. So then, so you develop this arc with this lesbian relationship between Dr. Torres. Uh, Torres and Dr. Han, and it was in the Revelation episode uh, that they had uh, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, was a greatly written episode. And I thought, finally, they're showing something realistic here on TV. And then you go ahead and you dump her, and you and you don't even explain it. And it's like, okay, ABC. And obviously, this was an order that came from the brass top because it did not come from Shonda uh, Shonda Rhimes, Miss Creator of Grey's Anatomy. So I, I guess there's issues with that. You know, I don't know if it was just too much to handle, or you just didn't ex expect it to be so realistically, but you have no problems with it. Which, I know it's a double standard, because you don't have an issue with it on Brothers and Sisters with the gay son. But, it's like, you know, usually we would accept a lesbian couple and not the gay couple, and we would accept lesbian storylines, but we don't accept gay male storylines, A.K. what they did on 30-something. Um... And the infamous gay kiss from I forgot what episode that what series that was. Please someone remind me whatever that was. But so there's like a conflict or a contradiction of, of standards here when it comes to gay characters on televisions, especially in network television. Uh, and specifically ABC, I guess. Um, so I'm a little confused, but you know what? Maybe that's just me. Um, ranting off because you know I'm also pissed off about Prop A passing in California and I'm pissed off about um, gay rights being gay marriage being denied in Florida and I'm also pissed about Ar Arkansas um, not letting gay people adopt children either so I'm just maybe this is all rolled <laughs> into one tidal wave of emotions for me and a whole series of things that's finally pissing me off and pu pushing me over to the edge you know I'm glad I'm happy that our country as a whole has forward and advanced itself socially in electing Barack Obama as our new president and I'm very grateful for that and I'm very ecstatic for that I'm not a hundred percent secure that things will get done as quickly or as comfortably or as rationally as possible but again but then again that's with every uh, new presidency that's a that you have to expect and every you know term of administration and you know things are going with that and politically you know you have to expect that I know things are not going to happen overnight with the new administration but I'm cautiously optimistic that's the phrase I'm looking for I'm cautiously optimistic that President-elect Barack Obama will do for our country what we have asked we're asking him to do for our country in all matters uh, I'm happy that he's going to close Guantanamo Bay I'm happy that he's going to repeal um, don't ask don't tell in the military um, Let's see if he bails out the auto industry. Let's see what he can do for the rest of our um, citizens in this country with new jobs. You know, 2.5 million jobs, I think, by 2011. Let's see how that goes. Um, so, I know I just threw a lot of stuff out there for you to comprehend, but that's where I'm at right now. So, maybe I should take a chill pill and I'll come back and talk to you soon. Bye.